Let's get ready to mortgage. He is the prince of programs, guru of guidelines, master of matrixes. He puts the fun in funding. Please welcome Mark. Mr. Mortgage, I tell. All right, my name is Mark Itell, and you are listening to the Mr. Mortgage Show. And you're in the right place if you want the news, the data, the information, the tips, the tricks, the strategies that you need to go out there and make better real estate and mortgage decisions for you and your family. And my God, the headlines are crazy. So sit tight. We're going to dig into all the headlines. Um, A lot of news this week around the impending Federal Reserve rate increase, the um, housing prices are slipping, we're into a buyer's market, oh my God, it's the end of the world. I mean, I've read so many crazy headlines this week, so we're going to dive right into all that, but before we do, I just want to throw out the Anytime Hotline. If you have questions or comments, call or text the Anytime Hotline, 855-462-7292. That's 855-462-7292. Dom, my producer, is manning that hotline, and he'll get your questions on the air. Again, you can call or text that number, 855-462-7292. If you prefer to send an email, you can just visit mr.mortgage. There's no .com, just mr.mortgage. And the upper right-hand corner is a um, contact us box. You can fill your questions out there, and Dom will get your email and read it on the air for you. So anyway, without further ado, let's dive right in because I am chomping at the bit to get started this week. So I'm holding in my hand, hot off the press, the latest doom and gloom CNBC article by my favorite reporter, Diana Olick. And you guys hear me poke at Diana all the time. And I actually like her. I think she does a hell of a job. I just think she's drawn the short stick at CNBC and her job has of late been to point out all the negative parts of the housing market. So this headline does not disappoint if that's her goal, because it starts right off in big, bold letters. Homeowners lose wealth as rising interest rates weigh on home values. And if you listen to the podcast, you heard me talk about this a little bit yesterday, but we're going to dive deep into it today. So again, homeowners lose wealth as rising interest rates weigh on home values. Now, Right away, you're thinking that must mean home prices are going down because how else would you be losing wealth because of interest rates? Now, firstly, let me correct Ms. Olick in, in this one instance. The cost of money has zero to do with the value of any product. It's supply and demand. So the cost of money can have an ancillary effect on demand, which at some point the Fed is hoping outweighs the supply to start to balance the real estate market. And we're seeing a little bit of that. We're seeing activity slowing because the cost of money is higher. But here's um, where this article really just kind of loses me. She goes on to, to um, quote some, st- blah, 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 blah. she goes on to quote statistics, right? The home prices in July of 2022 are down from June of 2022. And that sounds startling, right? But the data suggests we're looking at a 0.77% reduction in median home prices. And that's where we need to start because everybody knows what an average is, but very few people know what median means when you're talking about statistics. And it's not the average, just like the median in the highway is that grassy section right in the middle. That's what a median home value is. That means if 11 homes sold in the neighborhood, they're going to be looking at number six if you line them up from the least expensive to the most expensive. So the one right in the middle with the same number, not the same value, but the same number of sales on the high side as on the low side, that one in the middle becomes the median value. Now, you can quickly see how that can be a little bit deceiving or hard to surmise what a neighborhood value is if the neighborhood is stacked predominantly one way or the other with values and you're just hitting that one in the in the middle by by contrast average means you would take those 11 add them all together and divide it by 11 to get an average number and that number can be skewed wildly by you know one if you're in um i don't know let's think about this for a second listeners in north palm beach okay there are neighborhood or streets in North Palm where the homes are on the water 
and there's a boat lift or a boat dock behind and that home might trade at $2 million and the home across the street might trade at six or 700,000 because it's on a dry lot. So you can see how doing an average might skew wildly high or wildly low depending on the alternate values in that specific neighborhood. And that's where the median has come into play for the most commonly used statistical middle ground, if you will. But think of the median just like you do in the middle of the highway or in the middle of the road. It is the exact middle of all the data being um, compared. So the median home price in July was down less than 1% of June's number. And right away we run to a headline that says we're losing wealth. Well, wait a minute, median home val- uh, home prices are down 1%. And I'm not going to d- dive too deep into this article. I'll post it online for you. But she goes on to sh- say it's statistically the largest drop since January of 2011. And those references back to, you know, 2011, 2008, all of that b- conjures up these fearful images of the market is going to repeat itself and we're setting up for another crash. Guys, I don't see that happening for the the supply and demand reasons we outline all the time on the show. And if you have questions about that, give us a shout or participate. Shoot us a text, jump on the air with us, and we'll talk it through. But the article finishes by saying, still, home appreciation year over year is up 14%. Now, wait a minute. The headline just said, Homeowners are losing wealth because of the big drop in home prices due to the pressures of interest rates, right? We just read that together three minutes ago. And we're finishing the article by learning the appreciation on a national level average across the board is 14% as per her data sets. I've presented some that say 15, some that say 18, some that say 10. They're all specific to each individual area, each individual market. But we're looking at averages of double-digit appreciation. Man, if that doesn't contradict the headline that just told us that we were losing our equity wealth because of interest rates, I don't know what else does. I mean, it's, it's truly crazy to me, and I don't understand the goal of it. I guess I do, right? We live in that clickbait society where you're scrolling through Facebook or you're scrolling through Instagram, and you see that post that says, um, it's all the time. You won't believe what happened next. And then you watch this three minute video and nothing happened next or you watch this video of you know the 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 super cute girl out there spray painting the t-shirt and she's putting layer after layer of stencil on it and she's painting it and you're you know painstakingly watching this video waiting for the big reveal and there's nothing at the end there's absolutely nothing the goal of that video was to capture your attention get you to watch the video so they can trick the algorithm into thinking they've got meaningful content And then their stuff pops to the top of the line. I don't think it's any different with the news um, articles that are. It reminds me of the old, um, I talked about this on the podcast too, the old uh, romance novels. Oh, let's not go there. How many people have opened up a menu and you see this big, delicious presentation? And when you order the meal, it comes out and the fast food industry is notorious for this. It looks nothing like what you ordered. And that's what's happening. You're reading these headlines and you're thinking, oh my God. The world is going to end. And then you read the data in the headline and you think, wait a minute, what am I missing here? Is the world ending or is it still a good time to own and buy buy real estate? So that's what we're here for. We do this every week right here, same time, same station with the intent to myth bust the headlines and answer your questions. And that's just one more example of a national news outlet providing data and they're providing the data. The data is real. It's good. It's solid. It's accurate data. But the headlines are super, super doom and gloom. And sadly, the majority of people are just reading the headlines and reacting to it. And I caution everybody to do that. And I want to share a story with you. This just happened to me uh, last week. I met a, a colleague for lunch and I arrived first because I am really anal about being late. And there was a gentleman sitting next to me at a table with a with a young son and he was bouncing around in the chair And the dad was on the phone. Well, the son fell. The chair went over. But the way it went over, he stayed inside the chair. He never hit the ground. He actually had a giant smile on his face when he landed. And I kind of gave him a smile and a thumbs up. Well, the waiter saw it and comes running over. Oh, my God, your son fell. The dad jumps up 
and the son reacts to the reaction of the adults and starts crying. He must be hurt, right, because of all of these reactions. Well, the kid 30 seconds ago was having the time of his life, and now he's scared to death because everybody's reaction. I think the same thing is happening in the housing market. We're reading these headlines, and we're reacting to the reactions and not the data. So we're going to dive into a ton more. We're going to get to your questions. Um, You hear the music. You know what that means. That is my cue. We'll be back in two. We're going to be back in two short minutes to dig into some more data and take your questions. Buying a home can be stressful. Willow Title Services will help you close the deal. Offering tailored services for your unique home buying needs, you'll have a single team member guide you from day one to the day you get your keys. They have a combined 50 years of experience. So trust the closing experts and contact them today. Visit willowtitleservices.com. That's willowtitleservices.com. Willow Title Services is rooted in experience to help you get to closing. Here's another five-star review. My wife and I own a small business. And the way our accountant file our taxes we don't show much income on tax returns. Because of this it looks as if we don't make the money. This was a problem for our bank when we applied for a mortgage. But not for Mark. He verifies our income by using our monthly bank statements. Mark and his Mr. Mortgage team made a big difference for me. Yes I am happy to recommend Mr. Mortgage Mark. Hey, it's Mark Eitel, host of the Mr. Mortgage Show. You hear me all the time talking about the need to have the very best team representing you in a real estate transaction. And that starts with a really great agent. If you've got a great agent, that's awesome. But if you don't, check out www.reallygreatagents.com. There you'll find the best of the best, regardless of the city they work in or the brokerage they work for. www.reallygreatagents.com. www.reallygreatagents.com. Are inflation and everyday expenses eating into your retirement income? Maybe you've considered a reverse mortgage and have unanswered questions, like, Do I still own my property? Can the bank kick me out? What happens when I die? Can I still leave my house to my kids? These are all great questions. Visit www.moreaboutreverse.com to learn more. That's www.moreaboutreverse.com. www.moreaboutreverse.com. Welcome back to the Mr. Mortgage Show. Call us now at 855-462-7292. All right. You heard the man. Get your questions on the air by calling or texting 855-462-7292. That is the brand new shiny toll-free anytime hotline 855-462-7292. 7292 and Dom will get your questions on the air. Hey, just to finish up my thought about um, the difference between, you know, what the menu item looks like and then that, you know, that burger or that sandwich that um, gets dropped in front of you 10 minutes after you order and you're like, what is this? It looks nothing like the picture. Anybody who's on, been in online dating uh, can definitely relate to that because uh, what it looks like online and uh, what you end up ordering, or I'm sorry, that sounds very impersonal. What uh, the person looks like online and what and what she or he looks like when they show up at Starbucks to meet you for a coffee are often uh, very different. There was a funny meme bouncing around when um, the Aquaman movie was popular a year or two ago. What's the actor's name for Aquaman? Um, J- Jason uh, Momoa? Uh, Momo- Mimosa? Momoa. Dom's giving me the thumbs up. Jason Momoa. And there was a picture of Momoa all buffed up looking good long hair and he's in the water with his uh, trident sword and then you know the guy in his boxer shorts with the beer belly in the um, you know the cool long hair but the beer belly and it said what it looks like online and what it what it looks like when it arrives at your door and that's what what these headlines are doing to you they're grabbing your attention scaring the heck out of you but if you take the time to actually Look at it, read it, and dissect the data for yourself. I think it's far less uh, scary. And, you know, here's another article just supporting what I'm sharing with you now. And this one was created by the economists at Remax. And they, um, you know, just like Redfin and everybody else, they've got economists on staff who dissect all this data and share um, press releases. And I pulled this one right off the wire yesterday when I was prepping for the show. And they're talking about inventory jumping for the fourth consecutive month 
and there are uh, 13.3 percent more homes for sale in uh, June uh, over last year's June. So right away, again, we're talking about supply and demand, and that plays into that, right? You're thinking supply is coming up. Well, I shared an article and a data set a little earlier in the week to the Facebook uh, group, uh, The Mr. Mortgage Show on Facebook, and it's a chart, a, a historical chart of housing inventory. And yes, we're on the upswing, no doubt about it. But today we're half of uh, half of where we were in 2019, which is the last normal month of, of any economic data, because prior to that, or I'm sorry, after that, we ran into the pandemic and we've never experienced economic policy like we have over the last two years. So it's difficult to gauge historical activity versus future possibility when you're looking at it through the lens of a once in a lifetime event. But anyway, they go on to say that housing inventory is up. It jumped 13%. But here's the thing, right? New listings. Now this is their data, not mine. I don't have any reason to contradict it, but it said new listings dropped 7.8% compared to June, which was 7.2%. Uh, compared to July of 21. So they're looking at new houses are coming to the market at seven point whatever percent, depending on the month that that we just referenced, slower pace, but they're sitting there a little bit longer, right? That's what logic would dictate if there are more on the market. But it goes on to say, this is what I find truly fascinating, and it contradicts the headlines that the CNBC article that we just read. And there's a lot of good data here. I'll share it also to the Facebook page. But it said the average close to list price. Now, this is a super important statistic. That means if you list the product for $100, what percentage of that $100 are you actually selling it for? Now, if you read that first headline, you're thinking, oh, my God, what am I selling it for? 85 cents, 90 cents? There's big discounts out there, right? Au contraire, mon frere. Here we go. The average close to list price ratio in July was 101%, meaning on average, right, they were paying over 100% of the list price. Now, that number is down from 102% in June. So, guys, I'm sharing that only because you need to keep perspective. Everything is relative. If you're going 500 miles an hour and and you slow down to 400 miles an hour and the headline says 100 mile an hour reduction in forward motion, that sounds super scary. But if the sub article says we're still going like a bat out of hell at 400 miles an hour, that's the more meaningful data. So anyway, I'm not going to belabor that. I'm happy, happy to have a conversation around any of these points, any of these topics on or off the air. You can get me by calling or texting 855-462-7292. 855-462-7292 is the Anytime Hotline. So I'm going to throw it over to Dom because it is question time, and that is my favorite time. So, hey, Dom, do we have any questions? We do. Kim is asking, we are retired and earn very little income, but we have a very nice amount of money in stocks. What are the options for a mortgage if we buy a rental property? Hey, Kim, that is a fantastic question, and I'm super excited that you're asking this because um, I participate in a lot of, I don't know, I was going to say brain trust, but that makes me think I'm, I'm a big brain. Actually, they just let me in and make me sit over at the card table with the kids eating the paper plate uh, servings at uh, uh, Thanksgiving. But anyway, they do let me in the room, but they don't let me participate in the conversation very often. But I'm sharing that because... There were some interesting new borrowing strategies that we were talking about specifically to this type of scenario, Kim, that you're referencing that you're in. So there are many, many ways to look at this. One is a traditional uh, mortgage product, right? A conventional loan, um, a purchase loan for investment property. There is what's called an asset depletion calculation. And basically what that means is if you were to live off your investments alone for the next whatever period of time, and that period of time is defined by your age, so an older person, that period is going to be shorter than a younger person, um, they, they, they're they able to surmise in underwriting that let's say you've got you know a million dollars and your time period that they're looking at depletion is 10 years. So in theory, you could pull $100,000 a year 
out of that portfolio, assuming that it's liquid or saleable. And that's the income number used. Now, here's the cool thing. You don't have to touch it. You don't have to take it. You don't have to move it. But you have the availability to um, tap those um, that portfolio, those holdings. And in that analogy, you would use $100,000 for annual income. So a lot of people don't realize that there is that alternative income verification strategy called asset depletion. It works really well for high net worth individuals who don't claim a lot of income. And we've talked about it a hundred times, and I'm always happy to talk about it again. Nobody goes to their CPA and says, hey, make me uh, mortgage ready. Increase my buying power to the to the highest level possible, because that what that means is they're going to show a ton of income, which is going to result in a lot of taxes. We all go to the CPA and say, hey, buddy, I want to pay as little tax as possible. And he rolls his sleeves up and digs in and starts writing off and writing down things to reduce your um, tax liability. But by doing that, your your uh, income that you're claiming on your tax returns is now much lower. Now, along that topic, we are able to add back depreciation and certain items that aren't uh, true expenses or losses against that income when we're using Uh, tax returns to calculate income. So that's not always a death nail, but it is a situation where a lot of people get wrapped around the axle. And then lastly, this new product I want to share with you, it's a new product in an old concept. And we've over the years have been blessed to have a lot of clients uh, in the area who have significant holdings. And we'll often refer them first to their money manager because you can collateralize a portion or all of your portfolio and borrow against it at a far lower interest rate and often with um, more beneficial, although shorter terms. So if you're thinking of, you know, buying and selling properties and you're going to flip and you're going to get into the whole investor game, then perhaps discussing the opportunity to collateralize a portion of your portfolio with a credit line might be um, an avenue that you want want to pursue. And I'm happy to give you more information about it. I just had a really interesting conversation with a money management group in uh, Vegas about this exact product that they've developed. And it's super liberal, great interest rates. It, you know, it, the, the guidelines are, um, are impressive. So I'm happy to share that info with you. If you want more information, just call or text us at that number, 855 855- Four six two seven two nine two, eight five five four six two seven two nine two is the anytime hotline, and I'll get you that additional information should you need it. So I appreciate the call. It's a great question. Um, there are so many alternative income verification strategies, whether it's a bank statement loan, whether in this case we're talking about asset depletion. It's just you know, there are many loan products that are a little bit outside the box because not all of us fit in that box so it's an exciting time as far as the availability of credit because there's a lot of cool new um, credit vehicles to allow you access to capital so anyway you hear that music you know what that means it is my cue to be back in two we're going to take a short break and we're going to dive into a lot more of your questions so sit tight and we'll be right back Buying your home is likely the biggest transaction you'll ever make. With stakes that high, you need certainty. Willow Title Services strives to take the stress away by providing a single point of contact with clear communication, resulting in a painless and positive experience. Willow Title Services has over 50 years in industry-leading and closing techniques, rooting them in the experience needed to get you to close. Call Willow Title Services at 561-737-1630 or online at willowtitleservices.com. Here's another five-star review. We started our loan with a different company. They said we were approved, but at the last minute they told us there was a problem. I still don't know what went wrong, but thankfully our real estate agent told us about Mark. I was pretty stressed, but it's the perfect house so we gave Mark a shot. He got it done. I'm not sure what was different but I don't really care. We even got a better interest rate and with less money out of pocket than the first guy quoted us. It was a great surprise. Yes, I'm happy to recommend Mark and his Mr. Mortgage team. Hey, it's Mark Itell, host of The Mr. Mortgage Show. You hear me all the time talking about the need to have the very best team representing you in a real estate transaction. And that starts with a really great agent. If you've got a great agent, that's awesome. But if you don't, check out www.reallygreatagents.com. 
There you'll find the best of the best, regardless of the city they work in or the brokerage they work for. www.reallygreatagents.com www.reallygreatagents.com Are inflation and everyday expenses eating into your retirement income? Maybe you've considered a reverse mortgage and have unanswered questions, like, do I still own my property? Can the bank kick me out? What happens when I die? Can I still leave my house to my kids? These are all great questions. Visit www.moreaboutreverse.com to learn more. That's www.moreaboutreverse.com. www.moreaboutreverse.com. Welcome back to the Mr. Mortgage Show. Call us now at 855 462 7292. All right, we are back. My name is Mark Itell, and you are listening to The Mr. Mortgage Show. And I hope you're enjoying The Mr. Mortgage Show. Um, I'd love you to call or text. Let us know what you're thinking. If you have questions or comments, shoot them over to us. The toll-free anytime hotline is 855-462-7292. That's 855-462-7292. I'm going to have to learn to do that in Spanish. Ocho, cinco, cinco, cuatro, seis, dos... Siete, dos, what is nine? Nueve? Nueve, dos. Look at that. We did that. We're in the um, the former studios of Musica Mia here at the uh, at iHeart uh, Central, so I was inspired to try to do that in Spanish. I'm sorry if I fumbled that a little bit, but thank you. <laughs> anyway, call or text 855-462-7292. That is the Anytime Hotline. I'm Mark Itel, and you're listening to the Mr. Mortgage Show. And I just heard that last spot. Um, and it reminded me again of Willow Title. And I just want to give a shout out to Willow. Um, we're actually working. Well, first, let me finish shouting them out. If you have title questions or you need just a rock star title company, and if you're an agent out there or even another mortgage broker and you're listening to the show and you want to develop a great relationship with um, a title partner, I would uh, recommend giving them a shout. And um, willowtitleservices.com is the phone number. I'm sorry, the website, willowtitleservices.com. Heather and her team are awesome. So they do mobile closings all over the state. So they send closers all the way up to Jacksonville or Key West. If they send a closer to Key West, it might suddenly turn into a three- or four-day closing, though, because there's a lot of fun going on down there. But anyway, just made me uh, think of them and wanted to give them a shout. But we're working on a speaking series with them where they're going to help um, and we're going to go to some of the uh, local 55-plus um, neighborhoods, if you will, and we're going to discuss some of the ins and outs of reverse mortgages because we're getting a ton of questions each each week in our practice around reverse mortgages. And I don't know if we'll get any today. If we do, I'm happy to answer them. But anyway, that reverse mortgage spot, I just heard it and made me think of Heather and her team. So, hey, again, I'm Mark Itell. You're listening to the Mr. Mortgage Show. If you want more of this, just visit mr.mortgage. Don't type in the .com. Just go up to the address bar and type in mr.mortgage. Hit enter and boom, we'll pop up. And uh, all of the answers to life's mysteries are available there at mrmortgage.com. But, hey, I'm going to throw it back over to Dom because I'd like to get some more of your questions in. So, Dom, what do we have over there? Tina sent this one. I love your show. We listen every week. Thank you, Tina. We're planning to buy soon, but can't figure out if offering a lower price or asking for a buy down is the best option. How do we figure out the math? Hey, Tina, that is a fantastic question. And that's one we get a lot, right? And, you know, good on you for for trying to figure this out. So I'm going to share a recent story with you. We're doing a um, transaction right now with a loan amount of four hundred thousand dollars. And the um, the sellers contributing en- enough money to buy the interest rate down almost a full percentage point. So in this instance, um, he's contributing ten grand, as I mentioned. So in theory, the buyer is paying ten thousand dollars more for the property than they could have negotiated for if it was just a net net transaction with no contribution. But here's where it gets super interesting. We you, what you need to do is look at the monthly savings of the lower of the two interest rates and see how long it takes you to make up that 10 grand. And in this particular instance, where we are with this gentleman is it's going to be about a six year hold period. And then he's saving every month after that. And that money's just going into his pocket. But the cool thing is he starts saving 
and I don't have the exact math in front of me, but it's around $150, I'm, You know what? I'll post it up online, th- this exact example, because I don't want to get the math wrong. But it's about a six-year hold period, and the cool part is it's a significant monthly savings from day one. Now, we talked this through with the client in length because this guy's super smart, super savvy guy, and his thought was, let me pay less, I'll take the higher interest rate, and then I'll just refinance later when rates come down. Awesome strategy if rates do come back down again. And that's the big unknown. I mean, I've read articles that indicate that they think rates are going to be in the fours this time next year. But those same people that say interest rates are going to tumble to into the fours by the end of 2023 are the exact same people who told you in December of 2021 that rates may hit, not not my words, their words, and I'll post this also to the website, they may hit 3.3%. Well, guys, rates hit 3.3% and ran them right over like a truck. So these these economists are forecasting. They're doing their very best to give you a forecast, but it's just that. It's like the weather. That storm could go right, it could go left, but they're letting you know it could also hit you. So I'm sharing all that because if you're making today's decisions based on unknown tomorrows, I think that's a little bit dangerous. If you make today's decisions based on today's facts, then you're going to be fine tomorrow no matter what happens. Because if you buy down the lower interest rate and rates never come back down, boom, you win. You've been saving this whole time. If rates do indeed come back down, you can always refi then. And I get it. It's another set of closing costs. It's that whole you know, you don't want to have to go through that if you don't have to. However, nothing is stopping you from seizing that opportunity should it present itself in the future. However, you're hedging yourself against it um, now by making that decision. So I'm always of the mindset that if you can buy the rate down, do it, especially if you're using someone else's money to do it. So I hope that helped. Um, I really appreciate that question because we're getting a lot of interest around those buy down strategies when it makes sense and when it doesn't and if you need more information you can call me during the week at 855-462-7292 or if you just want to learn more about the whole idea go to mr dot mortgage there's a ton of info there um, and it'll link you back to some of the other resources that you hear me share so anyway let's keep the questions rolling i know dom's got some over there i can see the computer screen flashing at me so dom what do we have Chuck sent the text. I own my house outright and plan on leaving it to my son. Could I add him to the title to prevent inheritance tax? Okay, Chuck. Um, another really, really good question, and we get it often. Um, so I'm not an attorney. I'm not a tax guy, so I don't want to speak to the inheritance tax side of it because I don't know. I don't know enough about it to really. I, I just I'm going to stay away from that and refer you to somebody if you don't have a CPA or a tax attorney that that you're comfortable with, give me a call or shoot me an email and I'll give you a reference of somebody who will do a free consultation and just walk you through the pros and cons of of doing it that way. We see a lot of people do that. You know, that all of that being said, that big disclaimer that I'm not the tax guy because I'm not going to speak to inheritance tax, but we see a lot of um, adults in later li- or uh, senior um, later in life They'll add their adult children to the title with that same intent. And they are now co-owners of the property, and you can do uh, joint tenants in Florida, and then they'll automatically become the sole owner upon your passing. And the tax side of the tax issue aside, that's a pretty clean um, transition of ownership. Here's one caveat to consider. I don't know how much longer you have with us. Hopefully it's a very long time, but during that time period that your son is on your property, uh, on the title of your property, he also now, from an underwriting standpoint, if he was to go out and get a mortgage of it on a property of his own, he's going to have to show that your properties, taxes, insurance, homeowners insurance, our homeowners association is all paid in full, and he's going to get his half of that ownership right, if, if you will, um, counted against him from the debt to income ratio standpoint, because we're going to look at all of his debt on his credit report, the proposed debt for his purchase, if that is indeed what's happening. And then we're going to take his portion of the expenses to own your property 
and include those in his debt side of the transaction uh, or the calculation when we're doing debt, debt to income. So um, great, great question. We get it a lot, and I'm happy to direct you to a tax attorney or a CPA that can answer more specifically. But uh, hopefully that helped with the with the title, uh, the, the information I shared regarding putting him on title and the pros and cons. So anyway, you hear the music. That means uh, that's my cue. We'll be back in two, two very short minutes to take more of your questions. Thanks. New to South Florida and ready to sit down roots with a new home? Willow Title Services makes closing a smooth, painless, and positive experience. With individual service for each buyer's needs, Willow Title Services has a combined 50 years plus of experience with industry-leading closing techniques. Call Willow Title Services today at 561-737-1630. That's 561-737-1630. Online at willowtitleservices.com. Willow Title Services is rooted in experience to help you get to closing. Here's another five-star review. As a realtor, I have a bunch of mortgage brokers to choose from, but I prefer to work with Mark and his Mr. Mortgage team. In this crazy market, there is no room for error, especially on the mortgage side. Mark's team moves fast, keeps everybody in the loop, and makes things happen. They always give my clients a great deal and take the time to walk them through every step of the process. When you're considering a lender, I encourage you to talk to Mark Itell and the Mr. Mortgage team. Hey, it's Mark Itell, host of the Mr. Mortgage Show. You hear me all the time talking about the need to have the very best team representing you in a real estate transaction. And that starts with a really great agent. If you've got a great agent, that's awesome. But if you don't, check out www.reallygreatagents.com. There you'll find the best of the best, regardless of the city they work in or the brokerage they work for. www.reallygreatagents.com. www.reallygreatagents.com. Are inflation and everyday expenses eating into your retirement income? Maybe you've considered a reverse mortgage and have unanswered questions, like, Do I still own my property? Can the bank kick me out? What happens when I die? Can I still leave my house to my kids? These are all great questions. Visit www.moreaboutreverse.com to learn more. That's www.moreaboutreverse.com. www.moreaboutreverse.com. Welcome back to the Mr. Mortgage Show. Call us now at 855-462-7292. All right, we are back. My name is Mark Itell, and you heard the man. 855-462-7292 is the Anytime Hotline. 855-462-7292. You can always call or text that number anytime. That is affectionately known as the Anytime Hotline. Dom is standing by and manning that to make sure your questions get on the air. And speaking of your questions, they're always my favorite part. So let's jump into a rapid round because I know they're backed up over there. I've been a bit long winded, but we've had some good topics and some good questions so far. Uh, But anyway, let's keep it rolling. And I'm going to throw it over to Dom. Max is asking, we received an offer to buy our house. They want to give us a big down payment and they want to take over our mortgage. Is this above board? Hey, um, yeah, that's a great question. So there's a lot of people who are um, willing to do that for you. They'll give you a down payment and then they want to leave the mortgage in your name and then pay that mortgage on your behalf. And it's called subject to mortgage. The offer is subject to them. Um, They're not taking over your mortgage. They're paying it. You're keeping it in your name. And right away, I, I can see, well, I can't see, but I'm anticipate or I'm, I'm, I'm guessing that the light just went off over your head, right? If the mortgage is in still in your name, but you've deeded the property to the, the quote unquote buyer, then do you still have risk by leaving that debt in your name? And yes, you do. If they stop making that mortgage payment, you're going through that foreclosure, even though Technically, you don't own that property anymore because you deeded it, deeded it away to the um, buyer. And oftentimes they'll encourage a um, quit claim deed, which is a super easy couple page document. You file it and you're done and there's a new owner. Now, here's where it runs into a challenge. In theory, it makes sense and in theory it'll work. But now you still have that debt in your name. And should you want to go out and buy something else, you're now going to have to 
show that 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 other mortgage payment is being made by somebody else so it's not counted against your debt to income ratio and again you have a lot of negative potential if they stop making that payment now one other thing to consider in addition to you being still responsible on paper is a lot of mortgages have what's called a due on sales clause and what that means is if you transfer the the property under these circumstances the mortgage company can technically call that note due because you no longer own the property that note is due in full upon sale of the property Um, so there are a lot of um, moving parts around this answer and i would encourage you to speak to a title attorney just to get all of the nuances addressed because um It's an easy transaction for a lot of people because they don't have to qualify for a mortgage. There's not a big set of closing costs, and um, they're taking over what may be a more favorable interest rate and a more favorable payment, but they're not assuming it. It's not leaving your name. It's not leaving your responsibility. They're just making those payments on your behalf, and you're going to have to have a super high trust level with whoever that is. So I'm going to step away from this one and not form an opinion one way or another and just advise you to dig deeper. If you want to have a conversation off the air about it, I encourage you to give us a call or visit us online at mr.mortgagenever.com. Just type in mr.mortgage. But I'm going to throw it over to Dom so we can keep your questions coming. Here's a question from Hal. What is the minimum age to qualify for a reverse mortgage? What happens to our house after we die if we have a reverse mortgage? Do our kids get stuck paying it off? Hey, Hal, that is a great question. And that reminds me of one of my favorite movies, Shallow Hal. And I'm not implying that you're shallow, Hal. (laughs) See what I did there? Anyway, um, super question. And the answer to... so. Long story, let me back up. There were two parts to that question. One, minimum age, right? So 62 years old is the minimum age for a reverse mortgage. Now, that being said, there's a a new reverse product um, that you you can get a reverse mortgage as young as 55. Now, there are a lot more stipulations around that product, but the traditional Heckam reverse mortgage that we talk about all the time, um, one of the borrowers needs to at least be 62 years old. Now, That being said, what happens to the property when you pass and you leave it to your kids? And I think your words that Dom shared was, do my kids get stuck paying that off? The answer is yes. It's just like if you died and you had a normal mortgage, right? They've got the estate's going to have to satisfy that note. Now, the cool thing about a reverse mortgage is there's many, many cool things. First, let me put it that way. Um, They're super misunderstood. But one of the really neat parts about it is it's a non-recourse loan. So let's assume that you, you know, and let's hope you live for a very long time, which will allow you to run up that reverse balance, right? You're going to owe a lot of money. Let's say you owe more than it's worth when you die. Your kids don't have any liability. They can slide the keys across the desk. And it doesn't matter if you've got a ton other assets like one of our other callers, right? They said they had a load of assets, You don't have to liquidate those other assets to satisfy this. It's a non-recourse loan. So your kids, if there's equity, it goes to the children. They'll inherit it. They can sell it. They can refinance it into one of their names, just like a normal mortgage. That's all it is. A lot of people get wrapped up around the axle, too. They say, okay, well, I'm borrowing $250,000, but there's a potential. I could owe three fifty dollars when I die. I don't like that idea. Well, guys, if you borrow $250,000 right now today to go buy a house with a normal mortgage, and over time, you're going to pay way more than $250,000 back to the bank. You're paying more than you're borrowing either way. The difference with the reverse mortgage is you're not making a monthly payment, and that um, balance that you owe just grows. So there's a lot of misconception around it. I welcome a conversation. You heard me mention that we're going to put this speaking series together. If you have any interest in that, um, you know, follow the webpage, mr.mortgage, go to mr.mortgage. Don't put in the .com, just mr.mortgage. You can contact us there and uh, we'll be happy to invite you to one of these presentations. And we're just going to do a good, the bad, the pretty, the ugly, the pros and cons. And just like we do on the radio, it's going to be an open Q&A. So I encourage you to be a part of that if you can. But hey, thanks for that question. So I'm going to throw it over to Dom and see if we can get some more of your questions. Susan is asking, you were talking about buying down the interest rate. Will this work for a refinance? 
Hey, Susan, that's a great question. And, and I'm glad you shared that because that's a strategy that's often overlooked. And yes, you can buy the interest rate down um, with a refinance. I mean, there's nothing stopping you from buying that rate down. So that's a great idea. And I get it, right? It's your money, but you're playing with the house's money, if you will, because a lot of people have seen significant equity wealth created in the last couple of years. And if you're going to use a little bit of that to buy the rate down, so you're keeping your payment where you want it to be, that may make sense. So back to that article that we talked about, I mean, even in the face of that, you know, doom and gloom article that Diana Olick published uh, yesterday in CNBC, they're still um, citing 14% annualized appreciation. So people are still year over year making money in real estate. And maybe it makes sense to um, use some of that equity to buy the rate down with a strategic refinance that's lowering, you know, your monthly outflow. So great, great question, great strategy. And the answer to that is yes. So I'm going to throw it over to Dom and see if we can get another one in. Landon sent the text. What does it mean when a condo says it's a co-op? Hey, Landon, that is a very cool name, brother. I like that. That reminds me of Little House on the Prairie and Michael Landon. I think his name was Michael Landon, the the guy with the you know, the big, bushy, beautiful hair that it was hard to imagine him living (laughs) on the prairie because he never looked sweaty. But anyway, um, a co-op is just a different ownership structure. It's cooperative. So in a co-op, and I'm going to try to make this make sense, you don't actually own the unit. You own a share of stock of the co-op that's backed by the unit. So if there are 100 units in the building, then there are 100 owners of the co-op. And I know what you're thinking. Can we still get financing on this? And you can. It's a little bit trickier because you got to think of it from the lender standpoint. The um, foreclosure process, a lender is always thinking worst case scenario. If they're foreclosing on the property, it's a different um, strategy. It's a different um, path that they have to take, if you will, because they're not uh, foreclosing on real property. They're foreclosing on that ownership instrument, which in the case of a co-op is most often a share of the company. So I'm happy to dig deeper with you on that. And maybe I'll, you know what, when we get on the other side of this break, I'll explain it a little bit more because it is a great question. And there are a few co-op uh, communities here in our area. So, but anyway, you hear the music. That's my cue. We'll be back in two. I'll finish up Landon's questions and dig into more. Sit tight. Buying a home can be stressful. Willow Title Services will help you close the deal. Offering tailored services for your unique home buying needs, you'll have a single team member guide you from day one to the day you get your keys. They have a combined 50 years of experience. So trust the closing experts and contact them today. Visit willowtitleservices.com. That's willowtitleservices.com. Willow Title Services is rooted in experience to help you get to closing. Here's another five-star review. We kept our business above water with credit cards during the pandemic. I'm glad we did. Business is better than ever. But I didn't want to be a slave to those credit card payments. I called Mark about the REC loan he advertises. Long story short, we did a REC refinance and paid off everything, even the car. Now we only have the mortgage payment. We're saving a bunch every month. Yes, we are happy to recommend Mark and the Mr. Mortgage team. Hey, it's Mark Itell, host of the Mr. Mortgage Show. You hear me all the time talking about the need to have the very best team representing you in a real estate transaction. And that starts with a really great agent. If you've got a great agent, that's awesome. But if you don't, check out www.reallygreatagents.com. There you'll find the best of the best, regardless of the city they work in or the brokerage they work for. www.reallygreatagents.com. www.reallygreatagents.com. Are inflation and everyday expenses eating into your retirement income? Maybe you've considered a reverse mortgage and have unanswered questions, like, Do I still own my property? Can the bank kick me out? What happens when I die? Can I still leave my house to my kids? These are all great questions. Visit www.moreaboutreverse.com to learn more. That's www.moreaboutreverse.com. www.moreaboutreverse.com. Welcome back to the Mr. Mortgage Show. Call us now at 855-462-7292. 
All right, we are back. 855-462-7292 is the Anytime Hotline. You heard the man. If you want your questions on the air, call or text that number, 855-462-7292, or visit the website, mr.mortgage, never a .com, mr.mortgage, and off you go. I left the WWs off because you don't even have to type those in. Just type in Mr., hit the dot, type in mortgage, and hit enter, and we'll pop right up. And you can submit your questions there, too. But, hey, let me finish up with Landon because that was a great question. So co-op, I think I explained that before the break. Um, It's just an ownership structure. You don't technically own the unit. You own a um, stock in the co-op, and that stock is linked to the unit, for lack of a better word. A um, condominium is a different ownership structure where you own your unit, but there are other rights that the association has to enforce and foreclose, and they have other ownership interests, but it's as the association's ancillary. It's a much easier process to lend against and foreclose on. Um, That's the condo, right? So co-op, condo, then you'll hear hear PUD or planned unit development, PUD, and that's a little bit of a different ownership structure. There's often a homeowners association, um, but you own the unit. And if it's a townhouse PUD, you will own the dirt underneath it. Um, But again, there's an association. The association has foreclosure rights. They also have enforcement rights. And then the last is fee simple. Um, And that's, you know, pretty much consider a single family residence with no homeowners association is a fee simple ownership structure. So co-op is just a a different ownership structure. It's a little more complex from the lender standpoint. And that's why you'll often be told that they're difficult to finance because not every um, lender wants to put their toe in that water. So I talked to Heather at Willow about this a lot because she sees all the ownership structures and some of them are super complicated. So uh, anyway, just wanted to mention that. Hopefully that makes sense. Hey, we're at the segment of the show where I like to just kind of recap. We've had some really good questions so far. We talked about buying the rate down. We talked about adding your children to um, the title to forego inheritance tax. Um, We talked about the different ownership structures. I'm trying to run through all this in my mind. Oh, collateralizing your portfolio as an alternative method to access um, credit. I think that's going to be a big one moving forward. So I was happy to get that on the air. But anyway, I'm going to ask you a favor. If any of this resonates, if you enjoy it, if you want more of it, um, you can always visit MrMortgageRadio.com for your own consumption. But my favor is if you know anybody who's thinking of buying, selling, or refinancing real estate, and you think they could benefit from anything that we talk about, please share the show with them. Turn them on to the show. They can find us at um, MrMortgageRadio.com or at the website, which is Mr.Mortgage, no.com, just Mr.Mortgage. And we will do our best to entertain them (laughs) and answer all their questions because we are adding stations and trying to grow our listenership. And uh, you can be a big part of that for us. So I'm hoping I can count on you to go out there with me and Pied Piper the show because we are enjoying doing this. But, uh, hey, you hear the music. You know what that means? We've wrapped up another week. Man, that was fast. Dom's over there wiping the sweat off his forehead. He's been running the board and answering your uh, your texts and your, your phone calls. So, hey, thanks for that. It was another super week here on the Mr. Mortgage Show. My name's Mark Itell. If you want to learn more, visit Mr.Mortgage, never.com. Just type in Mr.Mortgage. Otherwise, we'll be back here next week, same time, same station. You guys have a great week. That's a wrap. Join Mark Itell next week for more thrilling edge of your seat discussions about real estate and mortgages right here on the Mr. Mortgage Show. 